and fix it. Amen. Hello? Amen. I can lay my hand on you tonight. I don't care what kind of pain you have. And when I left you, you still have your pain. Amen. If you never believe. Jump on all over the place. You never believe. But if you believe, Brandon. supernaturally, God can heal you right in your seat. Amen. I have watched crusades. The preacher is all the way across town. The audience is all the way outside. By the time he finished preaching, tens of thousands of people have been delivered. They were walking and jumping and praising the Lord. And he never laid his hand on all of them. Where is your faith tonight, people of God? Where is your faith tonight? Stop putting your faith in the preacher and put your faith in the Almighty God who works supernaturally among his people. Praise be God too many times we y'all come to church looking for the preacher to lay the hands on you. Yeah. Amen. I want to take your mindset from us. Amen. And to the higher power, the supernatural God. Amen. That does everything right. Amen. The first time. Amen. I might pray for you one time and it don't work at five times and it still don't work. But tell you, if you come in contact with God with your faith, amen, you shall be made whole. When we get our mindset right, we take it off the preachers and we put it on God. So if the preacher like this one, this one, if this one die, we don't have no problem. We pray for him, we give the family our condolences, but we know what? Our God is not dead. Our God is still alive. I don't care what time of night, we can still call on Jesus. Amen. Pastor Hayek dead, but God is still alive. Pastor P died, but God is still alive. I don't have to wait till Sunday to go to church. My God is still alive. If I can only believe, amen, I shall be made whole. Amen. The woman with the issue. Amen. She didn't have to touch her. Did Jesus touch her any at all? No. Was she made whole? Yes. By her faith? Yes. Bless be God. That's what the church need to preach. And get the people mindset off of you. That's why some folks are doing a beat of themselves because the focus is not on God anymore. It's what I can do. Amen. It's what I can do. I can't do a thing outside of God. I can't even preach straight outside of God. If God don't regulate my mind, I'll make a fool of myself. Amen. Because I don't have something in front of me going line upon line. And precept upon precept. I am preaching as an option by the Holy Ghost. Amen. That's how the church ought to be. Amen to God. Get the mindset right. Amen. When you come to church, don't put all your belief in the preacher. Put your belief in God. There is the God that makes the universe. His name is Jesus. When you got a problem, call to him. If you cannot pray, go to the church. Let the people pray for you. But don't put your faith in the man of God alone. Put your faith in the Almighty God. And your faith will make you hope. I can't preach anything else for you. That would be a lie. That would be a lie. You have to have faith in God. Praise God. I know that's a challenge tonight. I know it's a challenge. But we're breaking the ground. We're breaking the ground. I know it's a challenge. But we're going in the city. We're going to take it. We're going to take the city by force. We're going to do what is right. Amen. We're not going to bypass nothing. Trying to haste and to hurry up. That's why sometimes folks get killed on the battlefield. They don't follow protocol. They want to haste the war. They look, at, look in their favor. They when they see the looking in our favor, let's go and knock this thing out. Not so, my friend. Even for there are other folks that can fight just like you. They have tactics and tricks just like you. Follow the protocol. Go in harder, step by step. Line upon line and precept upon precept. You will get the victory at hand. Just the patient in the body. Don't be too hasty about fighting this battle. Amen for your soul. So if you're going to fast, fast. If you have to forgive, forgive. If you have to say you're sorry, say you're sorry. Don't want to hear of that. But I don't care which church you go to. I don't care how long you've been the pastor. 
And if you have a heart against another pastor, and you preach like Paul, you sing like Satan, you still are gonna be saved. What you're doing, you are hastening the world, and gonna end up losing your soul. Take it step by step. Amen. Go and make it make it right. Forgive and ask for forgiveness. Make it right. Join force together and go knock out the army, knock out the devil. Amen. And the last day, at the end of the battle, we all get the victory. We all get the victory. We all get the victory. Then we can celebrate. Higher God, the victory. We smell water. But I don't want to make that sound nice to you. Praise God. I want you to see the reality of what's going on. Yes. Now we have sent victory. I have sent victory Hallelujah. in Aruba. Hallelujah. Among the churches in Aruba. We are now going to get our mindset right. Remember I said the sinner folks, they love you all. That's why when they have stuff and you invite them, they come. Stop telling them to dress like you and to live like you because they must save. And then you now must stop live, look like them and dress like them because you are saved. I, I know I'm helping us enough. You see, I don't come to mess up nobody. I love you all. And I come to help. But we are going to win this together. It's too great about it. We are going to die together and we're going to live together. Praise be God. Let me make this straight before I start. Because this is getting real end. The gift that God gave the church is for the bringing together of the body of Christ. It doesn't make you shine over there. I mean, I put up a, 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 a pinnacle over here. And, 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 and me a shine to put on gold, something like um, this thing in, in Manhattan. I know why they eat there. No. You know about the side of the church. Your side of the church has nothing to do with it. Because sometimes the bigger the church, and don't take this wrong, I'm going to say something. Sometimes the bigger the church, and the heart of the hell. So the church has nothing to do with it. So if, I, if somebody have a big church, leave them alone. If you have a little church, leave them alone. That has nothing to do with it. When a church in a community is building and it become more established, don't you expect growth? Yes. So alright. So here we are in, in, in Aruba. We will love everybody. No, it's the church, the church now start to live right, right? So you Christians, the sinner people that now start to get saved. So because the church starts to live right, the sinner start to get saved, we're not having enough space. So we're growing. Yeah. So we have to find another building to get bigger. Oh. Then the church start living right over there. Yeah. You see the people then start to get saved. So it get bigger. So I'm not going to boast about the people are getting saved. And the most of the people you have is the Lord and the, 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 the edifice to facilitate them. That don't mean you are saved than the other brother on the corner. No, you're not saving on me. Save is just saved, you know. If you're saved or you're not saved, you're not a medium saved, and a large saved, and a little saved. Save or save. Remember the last time the spirit saved? No, save, save, save. Hallelujah. The last time me should save or save is saved. Save, save, save. We never seen an archbishop save bigger. The other one save bigger or smaller. Save. All right, let me bring this on. The Bible says, it takes the foolishness of preaching to save folks. Sometimes you're looking for this kind of preaching. You're looking for this kind of demonstration. You're looking for this kind of manifestation. But no salvation is not in it. Amen. But let me tell you sometimes it's in the foolishness of the preaching. The thing that bothers your mind. That you can't really comprehend. That makes you think that when you leave church and you go home, you have a good dream. And God put the pieces together and give you a revelation and an understanding of what the preacher was saying. And next thing you wake up in the morning, you go to church as a pastor. I want to be baptized. Amen. I had a dream last night. I didn't go to church before. I didn't even understand what the preacher said. But I thought about it. Amen to God. He never so I'm so good. It's so foolish. And I went out to sleep. And I had a dream about it. And to God be the glory. I understand. I want to be saved. Amen. 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 
takes the foolishness of preaching most of the time. Say, folks, I'm going to wrap this now. When I went to church tonight, I don't record a thing. Absolutely, positively, zero what the preacher said. I mean, I didn't know if it came here and went there. I don't know. I don't record. I never get anything. I never own anything. I never put anything nowhere. But there was something going on on the inside of my heart. I told myself, I'm going to give my life to Jesus. May you stand to your feet right now in the house. That's all that took place with me. I just believe God. I make my mind up. I never understood a thing they said, but I had a conviction in my heart. If you have a conviction in your heart, for whatever reason it may be, can I start walk to this altar tonight? Forget about everybody 